I didn't see any charging. I'm gonna have to look into that, but I did not see any 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 charging at all, even when I uh, revved it up. I may need a stator. Welcome back. So this is not the video that I was planning on making. As you saw in the intro, the tractor is actually charging. So I had planned to make a let's diagnose a non-charging tractor. However, it is actually charging. I don't know what I did to fix it other than disconnecting a couple wires and do some tests and then putting them back and all of a sudden it started charging. So what I decided was is that since I put in the effort to research how this charging system works, I might as well go over it. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of information online about this particular charging system. This one is a little different than most of the ones you see. This has a, a kind of a different sort of stator alternator arrangement that is, it's, well, it's just different than, um, than uh, a lot of them. So real quick, let me go through a couple things and then we'll take a look at the actual tractor itself and the wiring on the tractor and see how this thing works and how it comes together. So we have an alternator here. And the first thing I did when I looked at this was notice that there's no voltage regulator, no rectifier. Well, there is a rectifier, but we'll get to that in a second. This uses a half wave rectifier. A single diode does all the work in the charging system as opposed to a voltage regulator which is a full bridge rectifier which uses a series of four diodes to accomplish the same task. A diode has one job. It allows current to flow one direction and doesn't allow it to flow the other direction. So you can use a single diode on an AC system. Remember an AC system has a wave like this. This is zero. So what the diode is then doing is preventing half of this current from going through. Whatever is negative, it will not prevent that from going through. So what you end up with is a wave like this. Here's zero. Okay. Now, the gap in here is caused because you only have a single diode. You have this gap flutter and that makes the system a little less efficient, uh, not as powerful, shall we say, uh, as opposed to a full bridge rectifier which has four diodes, which you get something more like this. And in fact, they can actually even smooth these out, smooth these out with um, some capacitors. Now, this is a very simple, it's the simplest way to convert AC, which is what the alternator runs on, to DC, which is what the battery needs. It's the simplest thing you can do is to use a single diode to do that. Okay. Now, what you give up though is you only get about 50-60% uh, efficiency, I think. What we end up with is 25 volts AC. We come out and we'll get 3 amps of DC. This is all at 3600 RPM. And that 3 amps of DC, what I measured it at was about, um, it, let's say 13, 13 volts. Now, not all these Briggs engines run like this. Uh, what I've seen, the newer ones especially, have a full bridge rectifier, which gives you a, a more solid wave, more efficient, and a stronger charge. These do not have a very strong charge. As you saw in the, in the intro, um, when I turned the key on and it started charging, it wasn't like a car alternator. Car alternator will, will take that charge on the battery up to about 13.6 volts immediately. On this system, you started to incrementally cha charge the battery very slowly. It's only a 3 amp system. Now, the other thing about this alternator is it puts out a separate circuit. And that separate circuit is approximately 14 volts of AC which runs the lights only. So the lights on this tractor are not run off the battery. 
you can't just turn the lights on with the battery. You have to have the engine running. That uh, so if your lights are dimming when the engine's running or changing RPM, that's why it's running directly off of the alternator, which is serving basically as an AC generator for the lights. What I thought was happening was I wasn't getting any voltage at this point out, outside of the diode. That wasn't the case. I was getting plenty of voltage. So I moved farther up line here. We went through. We know the ignition switch is working because it starts the engine. It does all it's supposed to do. And we get to an amp meter and a fuse. I checked the fuse. The fuse was fine. That goes to the solenoid, which is the solenoid connection for the battery. All this was fine. Now, I unplug the ammeter and strangely the engine will not will not start with that unplugged. Now, that may not seem strange to you because I'm breaking this connection to the solenoid. However, if I break the connection at, and I'll show you this in a second on the machine, if I break the connection down here before the ignition switch it actually will still start the, the engine. So it has nothing to do with this circuit between A1 and B. There's something in the ignition switch, between the ignition switch and the solenoid, which is controlling this, why this needs to be connected. And you don't have to have an amp meter here, this can just be a, a straight connection. And I did that as well. But for this video, I'm really concerned about just the charging system. So basically from here through and to the battery. So let's go make a couple checks on the machine itself and see how this kind of theory works in practice. We're on the right side of the engine. With this, you can see the starters right here. We have our main power to the starter. We have some wiring harness right here. This line goes up to the headlights in the front. This connection right here is from your stator. And notice something about this connection. Let me zoom in. Okay, you'll notice that this side of the wire is thicker at the end than this side of the wire. This is the diode, this little thick packet right here. Okay, that's going to be, uh, after that diode, that's going to be DC current. This wire goes to the headlights. So that's the the orange wire goes to the headlights, the red wire goes to the charging system. So remembering that, we can unplug this and we can put some leads on there. Okay, so I'm going to put a red I'm going to put the red lead on get it in there. On the diode side of the wire, this is our DC. The other side, the black lead is going to go just to the frame, that's just to ground. I'm going to put our meter on DC, set it here where it might not fall over. This will tell me whether or not the stator is working. And I'll notice this wire is disconnected. This wire goes to the ignition switch. It is part of the starting and running ignition system. However, it does not need to be connected to do this. So let's start the engine. So you saw there, I was getting a recorded 19 volts out of that. I don't know how they're getting 19 volts. My understanding is that that diode should not be putting out 19 volts, 19 volts DC from a 25 volt AC. Uh, it just isn't that efficient. But regardless of that, what we have is a working stator. So we know right now the stator is working. Now I'm going to put the lead on the other side and show you what the headlight looks like. And like I say, even though I'm not positive why it's, that's 19 volts, the point of the matter is, is that we got uh, enough charge to charge a battery out of that. So anyway, this is the AC side. I'm gonna change my meter to AC and we're gonna see how much AC output is on the headlights. <laughs>
So you see there we got about 14 and a half volts of AC. Now this is kind of interesting because for you motorcycle guys out there, um, there actually, I believe there is a motorcycle that uses this same sort of system. To, uh, it uses an AC system to run the headlights and a DC system to charge it. The name's escaping me right now, but it's, uh, I'll put it up on the screen. It's a little Yamaha 50cc pocket bike. Uh, YSR? Anyway, the name's escaping me. I'll put it up on the screen. Uh, most of the time, you know, most motorcycles use DC head headlights, just like uh, anything else. So we're going to plug this back in. Now we know we have power going into the wiring harness. Uh, remember I said there was a fuse and the easiest way to get to the fuse is to take the gas tank off. Easiest way to do any of the electrical under here is to take the gas tank off. It's just two bolts, one here and one on the other side. I think they were 10 millimeter. Just move that out of the way and right here we have a fuse. 20 amp fuse. Um, I checked it. It's fine. Okay, so that red wire for the charging system runs through the wiring harness runs up to the key switch which is underneath the here which is right there that connects when you turn the key to a connection that runs to this wire it runs back into the wire harness runs across and runs up and runs up to this is the back the back of the ammeter right here if you take these two wires off the engine will not start you can jumper these two wires together the engine will start now, I initially ex uh, suspected was that since everything else was performing properly, um, that there was something wrong with the amp meter. And there may still be something wrong with the amp meter. It may be working intermittently, so I'm going to have to pay attention to that. But basically, that's it. Uh, from there, that wire goes down to here. This looks like a fused link. It's actually not. It's just a, just a link and joins the main battery cable, which is this. Very simple. So what I ended up doing was I just was checking connections, just like I just did, okay? I unplugged the amp meter, I jumped it. It, was, it seemed to be working fine. I suspected it was the amp meter. And when I plugged the amp meter back in, it started working. I suspect one of two things is going on. First of all, I have read that there is some way either through resistance, through a voltage. I believe there's some way that the charging system senses how much voltage is in the battery. If there's not enough voltage, it doesn't charge. If that's not the case, then I believe there's something wonky in the ammeter and my messing around with it has just sort of fixed it. Uh, you know, one of those magical electrical fixes that just sort of happened. If you ever get anything electrical that's going wrong, turn it off and turn it back on again. If you don't have an on and off button, unplug it and replug it back in. That's just the way my experience with electrical systems goes. Turn it off and turn it back on again. It'll probably work. At any rate, that's where we're at. I didn't have to do a stator install, which I thought I was going to have to do in this video. That's fine. Um, I'd much rather do that. It's a lot cheaper to just unplug a wire and plug it back in and it works. So from this point, basically what I'm going to do is just watch it and make sure that when I turn it on, as you saw in the intro, that the amp meter is above positive and charging the battery. If it continues to do that, there's no problems. So the next video we're going to have on this is doing something with the hood. So I priced out a new hood piece. Um, basically, the bottom of this plastic hood, which is the stupidest design I've ever seen, is mounted to the to the metal mounting brackets that allow you to tilt the hood. Uh, idiot design. Um, what I think I'm going to do, I said I priced out these grills and the cheapest one I can find is about $80. Uh, I don't want to put $80 into a grill that, you know, I'm not even going to use the headlights. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut this grill off so it looks okay and just make some uh, modified, use the existing bracketry that I have. So I do have the brackets for this uh, still mount mounted to the broken plastic. So all I gotta do is figure out how these went together and then just uh, make some brackets to, to hold these and to make it work. Easy peasy, right? Yep, so we'll have that coming up and um, whatever else needs to be done on this thing. Pretty much so far, it did a good job cutting the grass and uh, for free, it's um, very well worth it. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.